Then they would pray, we're going to pray for in the name of the Lord that God might bless you, that God might help you. Praying long prayers, those prayers never made it out of the room. They just button up and get silly somewhere. <laughs> you say you're hypocrites because of your greed. Because of your greed. You had more than you could ever spend. These guys were filthy rich. They were like these guys at Enron. Now, he's going to try to say he's not guilty. The guy who was a part of the big Enron scheme. These guys are Lehman Brothers and AIG. They don't have no conscience. Here we messed around and globalized the world economically, and we set up a system whereby they could almost destroy the entire world's economic system. The most toxic, worthless, mortgage-backed securities that they had created in this country, we now got those things going all over the world. And that's why a lot of these people in these other countries, they hate us. They hate us because we've ruined their economy. They invested in these mortgage-backed securities that are worthless pieces of paper. And now these guys and took the government's money and they're voting themselves bigger bonuses like ain't nothing bad that happened. And, and people acting like ain't nothing wrong with it. It's an absolute mess. Obama got more to deal with than what he ever thought about dealing with. Not only is her going to be great, he's going to be looking like me the next year dealing with them crooks in Washington and in New York. People don't understand what this man is dealing with. A bunch of crooks in high places. And there's no way he can police them because the people who's supposed to police them, they crooks too. Most of these guys, they came right out of the banking industry. The guy, he got run the treasury and Bernanke and those guys. They're a part of the system. They're going to take care of their boys. That's exactly what they're doing. In the name of greed. In the name of greed. And greed will be the destruction of this country. And so now we got to be, we got enough money to bail out Wall Street and bail out the bankers and bail everybody out. We can't give people health care. We can't figure out how to do that. Greed. So Jesus indicts the greed of his day in the religious system. The next woe. Verse 15. What do you scribes and fairs and hypocrites when you travel land and see to win one proselyte? And when you win him, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourself. That's pretty heavy stuff. He said, your religious evangelism is worthless. <laughs> he said, you're traveling all over the country trying to win people to your faith. And when you win them, you turn them into a twofold son of hell just like you. You reproduce what you reproduce them. You know, I was indicted. I was in the presence of my mentor a couple of weeks ago, Dr. John Perkins. He said something that was quiet in the building. Nobody, it was totally quiet. You know what he said? He said, in our churches today, we're getting exactly what we preach for. We're getting the level of commitment that we preach for. And we're reproducing what we are. And that's a pitiful sight, that's a pitiful statement for the church today in America. And that's what Jesus was saying about these religious leaders. You're not winning disciples to God. You're not winning converts to advance God's kingdom. You're wanting converts that embrace the same value system of immaterialism, selfishness, and greed that you have. We haven't advanced God's kingdom at all unless we win people to love the Lord our God with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind, and all their strength, unless we raise up people who want to really serve God by serving other people. So he pronounces a woe to them because of their hypocrisy, because of their greed and because of the damage that they cause to other people and the damage they cause to the kingdom of God. It gets worse. Woe to you blind guides who say whoever swears by the temple is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? You see with a heart, see if you had your casual Bible verse, you would miss this. These guys were consumed with materialism and greed. So they say, well, if you swear by the temple, that's not a bad thing. But if you swear by the gold that's on the temple, that's a bad thing. <laughs> because the gold is more valuable. The gold is more precious. And Jesus said, you're blind fools. Don't you know the gold ain't nothing? It's the temple that's been set aside to God for the worship of God and for the glory of God, it sanctifies the gold. The gold doesn't add any value to the temple. It is the temple that is the place where God has agreed to meet with his people. That's what has value 
in terms of its symbolic value to God, not because you put gold on it. Fools and blind, verse 70, which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? And whoever swears by the altar is nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is on the altar, he's obliged to perform it. He says, if you come to the altar and you swear on the altar, that don't mean anything. But if there's a gift on the altar, money, sacrifice, then you're obliged to perform it. So he pronounces a woe to them because of their spiritual ignorance. Verse 20, therefore he who swears by the altar swears by it and by all things on it. If you swear by the altar, you don't swear by everything on the altar. <laughs> That's what the Bible instructs us, we should not swear. Our yes should be yes. Our nay should be nay. We don't need to be adding to our lie by saying I swear. <laughs> swear before God in heaven. No, don't bring him into this. Swear on my grandmama's grave. No, don't be great grandma in this because grandma ain't got nothing to do with it either. Either you're telling the truth or you're telling a lie. Don't be swearing by everybody. Yes, yes, no, no. That's good enough. The spiritual ignorance. He said, but when you swear by the temple, you swear of it and by him who dwells in it. You're swearing by God. When you swear by heaven, verse 22, and swear by the throne of God and by him who sits on it. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumming and have neglected the weight of matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Wow. These guys took, they took pride in the fact that they were tithers. They gave a 10% of the money that they had ripped people off of. <laughs> At least they gave 10% back. And they prided themselves on that. And they tied it down to the mint, to herbs and spices. They wanted to make sure if the IRS came, if Betty Crocker came to check their kitchen, everything they had, they had tied it. A tenth of it to God. And he says that you should have done. But you didn't care anything about justice. You didn't care anything about mercy. Right and wrong didn't matter to you. He says you should have did your tithing, but you shouldn't have left the other things undone. You shouldn't have left justice unattended to. You shouldn't have neglected mercy. Those things are more important than tithing your income. Tithing your income is important and we ought to do it. But we ought to be concerned about justice, about mercy, and about faith. These are weighty things in the eyes of God. I would encourage you, because if you don't have anything else to do, to read a couple of articles in the newspaper this morning. One article in the newspaper is about this connection. They connect these young people together. Uh, the young man that was killed a couple of years ago, Chase Miller on the East End, they connect his shooters, and they connect him to Desmond Clark, and they connect him to Antonio Jefferson, and they connect him uh, to uh, 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 Charles Moore, and they connect him to Smoot. They connect them all together. And I said, we told y'all that 10 years ago. There's a one group here that was wreaking all the havoc in the neighborhood and in the community. We told y'all that some time ago. And when they took us to task, the juvenile justice people, the probation people, the prosecuting attorneys people, local judges and community leaders, we met for them for two and a half years and we said, we got to do something about these young people who are wreaking havoc in our neighborhood. And it isn't a whole bunch of them. It's just a few of them. And they told us, Y'all don't know what y'all are talking about. Two weeks ago, there was another article in the Charleston Gazette about this latest double murder over in Kanoa City. They're not going to put up with it in Kanoa City. This double murder in Kanoa City, and then they link this young person, allegedly, back into the juvenile justice system, back into the care system, and now they're talking to principals, prosecuting attorney's office, probation officers, and all of them are trying to hide. Say, well, we, we don't know what to do. And that's exactly what we told them. You cannot continue to release these people back out on the street and nobody know where they're coming from or where they've been. Now, the very acts is starting to judge the system. You see, read these articles. It's all connected.